Well, thanks for uh, checking on my YouTube channel here. Uh, this is me starting out the helmet with a 12 gauge steel. I'm cutting it using a B2 Beverly shear, which is the preferred method of cutting steel, I find. I generally round the edges using a belt sander. Here you can see me heating up the plate using an oxyacetylene torch that I have attached to a gas saver. This allows me to light the torch and then heat the area up as needed. I'm hammering this out into a cast iron dishing form using a four pound rawhide mallet. Uh, I like doing hot dishing in this manner uh, because it tends to go a lot faster. Although if you're going to be hot dishing with a rawhide mallet, be prepared to get uh, the somewhat unpleasant uh, smell of burning hair. But if you don't mind that, uh, then go redhead. I usually start out my projects uh, with a detailed measurement of the wearer of the wearer's head, and this allows me to make sure and optimize uh, the fit to the wearer. Here, what I'm doing is I've dished out the two halves of the skull, and I'm now matching them as closely as possible. I like to do some of my fine cutting using a jigsaw with a uh, metal cutting bit. Here I'm tack welding the two halves together. Now I know that uh, this isn't necessarily a historical method of doing uh, a, a helmet, but this is a cost effective method. And since I'm usually doing this for a client, uh, the result for them is uh, negligible. They don't mind that I'm doing it uh, using modern welding, but I do have uh, exper metalworking experience in raising these helmets uh, from a single sheet. It's just that that's not what I was going to be showing in this video. So here what I'm doing is I'm tack welding the two halves together and I'm using heat and a hammer to close up the gaps. And this allows me to match everything up uh, again as closely as possible. And uh, what I'll do is once those tack welds are in place and everything is matched up the way I want it to be, I'll run uh, a, uh, a more complete weld. But in the meantime, at this point in the project, this is just to keep everything held together. Now what I'm doing is I'm measuring the, the depth of the skull. Uh, and this is generally taken from about where the corner of the eye is up to the crown. And again, I'm using a metal cutting uh, jigsaw blade to cut through the excess material. You have to be very careful with this because it can it can slip on you. And as all as you can see, I'm wearing a full face mask and wearing gloves. Now, what I'm doing is I'm going back into the skull and I'm applying heat uh, to the sides, uh, kind of to the temples. And what I'm doing is I'm pushing out. Uh, the sides of the skull because if you look very carefully at historical examples because they were raised you're not going to have kind of the flat profile along the sides of the head it's going to be much a little bit more domed and here what I'm doing is I'm I'm showing where the placement of the skull is in comparison to the historical original so it gives you an idea of what direction I'm going with the project now at this point, I'm actually laying out the pattern for the rest of the helmet, and that's actually using a good old fashioned poster board that I just tape up to the rest of the helmet. I cut out my pattern, I apply the pattern to the steel. Now unfortunately, because I didn't have a large enough piece of steel to accommodate the pattern, I actually had to make the rest of this out of two separate pieces that then were welded together. Ideally, I would have done that out of one piece of metal, but you know what, sometimes you just have to work with what you've got. So here you see I'm, I'm matching up the two pieces of uh, curved steel. And as, you, as it's obvious to tell, these are not, mm, if I was to just apply that to the, uh, the rest of the helmet, you would notice that it wouldn't fit at all. So now what I'm going to do, uh, now that I've had a, a finished weld applied to it, I'm actually heating up that same welded area and what I'm going to do is you can see me just starting to do it there but I'm actually pulling this up and that allows it to match the rest of the helmet uh, better as you can see there 
and it also kicks out the back of, uh, of the helmet. It starts to produce a little bit of the tail that will uh, that'll end up on the final piece. So now what I'm doing, this is a neat little trick of just uh, creating a nice flat uh, edge. I'm actually, I drew, I drew out the edge and then I uh, ground off the excess and now I'm tack welding it to the rest of the helmet. And again, this is just a process of tack welding, heating it, matching it, tack welding it. And this, is, this I find is the best way uh, if you're gonna be welding a helmet. This is the best and most uh, economical time-wise method of getting everything matched up. And it's at this point in the project that the helmet starts to begin to look like a helmet. Uh, there's a lot of tweaking. Sometimes it's done with the hammer. Sometimes it's just done with your bare hands. Uh, you just want to get the metal exactly where you need to. You can start to see some drawn lines uh, on the helmet showing me uh, kind of an idea of what the helmet's going to eventually look like. And I do this constantly throughout the project to guide me. and. As I'm going, I have to refine uh, my vision of exactly what the helmet's going to look like. Because sometimes uh, it goes exactly where you want it to, and sometimes it doesn't. So you have to work with the metal. Now what I'm doing is I'm, I'm actually now raising down uh, the back of the helmet. And I'm doing this while the helmet is still in the tack welded stage. Because I don't... Uh, I, if, if I completely screw this up, this gives me the leeway of just just popping those tack welds instead of having to cut the entire helmet. But uh, in, the, in this case, I didn't have to do that. But this is actually allowing me to push the metal down and this gives the overall helmet a really nice uniform look. This, this makes the finished piece not look welded. It makes it look like uh, more like the originals, uh, which would have been done uh, from one single piece of steel. And again, I know I've had a lot of people uh, who've been somewhat critical that uh, this video is showing me using welding and, and all I can say is that this this video is just one one of many methods to produce uh, a helmet uh, you know you'll notice that at the beginning I don't say this is the historical method this is just simply a method and here I'm kicking out the tail a little bit and now that I've got everything in the shape that I want it to be, I now apply the finished weld to the helmet. And one thing you may notice is that the edge of the helmet where I'm welding has been sandblasted. That's because I really want to make sure that I'm welding on clean steel. I don't want any, uh, any dirt or any grit or any slag getting into the weld. I want this to be a very strong weld. And this is kind of a neat little turnaround showing you uh, the flow of the entire piece. And now it's time uh, for me to start doing the finished sanding on this. Now what I didn't show in, in the video uh, was you go through a step of planishing the entire helmet before you start sanding. And unfortunately I didn't, I didn't have enough memory on my memory card at the time, so that part didn't get covered. So now what I'm doing is I'm outlining where I want the ocular region to be. The re that's the region that you're going to be looking out of uh, from the helmet. And this is just simply done with uh, thin masking tape, uh, a ruler, and a sharpie. And again, I'm going back to the use of the jigsaw uh, to do this, this fine cutting. And I find the jigsaw with a metal cutting blade is a very versatile tool uh, if you're going to be working with steel, but it's really difficult to cut steel past about uh, 12 or 10 gauge thick. Now what I'm doing is I'm, I'm marking and I'm now rolling the bottom edge of the helmet, and this is to not only give the helmet uh, strength, but it also, it, this is going to be nearest to uh, where the wearer's shoulders and, and, and neck is going to be. So this means that uh, the wearer is not going to have to worry about the risk of getting uh, cut by the edge of the helmet. And this is a historically 
historically accurate uh, method of, uh, of rolling an edge. You'll notice that I've uh, masked off the area around uh, the, the roll uh, to protect against stray hammer marks. And now I'm doing some finish sanding to the roll uh, using, the, uh, using the die grinder tool. Now what I'm doing is I'm using masking tape uh, and I'm actually going to be constructing the pattern for uh, the steel reinforcement around the ocular region and the mouth. And here I'm just cutting out the excess with a sharp uh, X-Acto knife. This is a fantastic way of doing pattern making on, uh, on, your, uh, on your armor because it allows you a great amount of control. Uh, in, in the construction of your pattern that will match with the exact piece that you're working with. And here you can, you can see uh, what that's going to look like when it's finished. So I peel off the pattern and I apply it to a piece of about, I believe this is a 1 8 inch uh, thick piece of steel. It's, pr it's a pretty hefty piece of steel. I'm using a jeweler's saw uh, to cut out the entire piece. Now, what th this actually took me about uh, an hour and a half to cut out, but I just reduced this down to a matter of like a minute. Uh, but once it's cut out, I then apply, I put it in the vise, and I use a file to clean up the interior lines. And now it's time to shape it and match it up with the rest of the helmet. And this is just some, this is a painstaking process. I mean, it didn't take a huge amount of time. It took maybe about an hour to do so, and but um, but it's worthwhile. It gives a really nice finished look to the helmet. And as you can see, it's just a process of uh, shaping it a little bit, applying to the helmet, and here I'm using vise grips to kind of hold everything in place. And vise grips can actually be used as a tool. Uh, a metal forming tool in and of themselves. And once I've got it finished up, I'm actually uh, using my die grinder and a file to uh, match up and finish the edge of the reinforcement with the edge of uh, the helmet's uh, ocular and mouth region. And here I'm, I'm doing some more finishing work on my, on my Steven Bader uh, belt sander. At this point, the, the project is really exciting because it's so close to being finished. I'm uh, cleaning up the edges and cleaning up the exterior of, uh, of the metal reinforcement. Now it's time to do the final sanding on, on the helmet. And I, as you'll notice, I'm using both the wheel directly on the wheel, and I'm also using the slack of the wheel uh, to to give it a nice rounded uh, or nice rounded finish. And here I'm going back over it. I, I usually use a, uh, a sponge, a sanding sponge, and uh, also I spray the piece with a little bit of gun oil, and this allows me to give the piece a really nice matte finish, really nice and even. And now I'm drilling holes for uh, the attachment areas. There's going to be a leather strap underneath on the inside of the helmet. You can kind of just barely see it there, but that leather strap actually has holes all, all along the top side of it. That's where I'm going to be attaching uh, the quilted liner. And right now I'm attaching the metal reinforcement. And this is done with, uh, with uh, domed rivet heads. The interior is painted with a matte black paint that's rust resistant. Here you can see the finished uh, piece with the uh, installed liner. And generally I'm pretty happy with the shape, although I'll, I'll admit now over a year later there's some things that I would do to, to change it. But overall I was very happy with the piece. Uh, I later on added a, um, a fencing, uh, fencing mesh uh, and I now actually, I personally use this. Uh, in my martial arts. Well, thanks very much for watching, and I hope you enjoy this re edit of this video. And I hope I get to make some more videos, and I'll see you soon.